Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two teams will need their quarterbacks to step up and lead their offenses on the gridiron today. It's Cutler's Dolphins going up against Tyrod Taylor's Bills. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. Winter just around the corner as you get a look at New Era Field just south of Buffalo, New York in Orchard Park. A few moments ago, to the delight of this Buffalo crowd, it was the Bills racing out of the tunnel as they get set to match up with the Miami Dolphins. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And you know, Charles, as Larry pointed out in the open, got a couple of great quarterbacks set to square off here this afternoon. That ball's probably going to be flying all over the place, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt. And the game has never been more quarterback-centric than it is now. And both of these teams have top-flight signal callers. Cody Parkey now ready to get this one started. And off we go for New Era Field. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. <laughs> and in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. So here come the Bills on offense for the first time. Leading them out in his seventh year now out of Virginia Tech, Tyrod Taylor. In his two years as a starting quarterback in Buffalo, he had over 1,100 yards on the ground, so we know that he can scoot, but don't underestimate his right arm either. 37 touchdown passes and just 12 interceptions in those two seasons. First down, it's Taylor. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Now let's take a look here at the Bills offense. I know I'm not supposed to be biased, but LaShawn McCoy is one of my favorite running backs in the game. Vision, elusiveness, creativity, can take nothing and turn it into something, catches the ball out of the backfield, and runs with that supreme arrogance that running backs have, the best ones in the game, thinks that no one can stop him, and at the end of a run, or drop a shoulder and get extra yardage. Now Taylor to throw on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And let's run through the Dolphins' defense. When Kiko Alonso first made it to the NFL, all I could think about was remembering him playing in college. And there's a wildness to him. There was also control as well. Always around the football. And when he arrived, you knew that he was there. And then he'd fool you at times, too, because he'd pick off a pass and return it for a touchdown. you say, where did all that speed come from? I thought he was a total package coming out of Oregon. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. Here we go! Now the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. And he'll be taken down here at about the 23-yard line. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. Mr. McCoy, by the way, had a heck of a game last week in the snow in Buffalo. Ran for 156 yards, and the biggest run was the last one when he had a 21-yard scamper to end the game in OT. So do you call that a walk-off touchdown, or is it really a runoff touchdown? Ooh. Uh, let's go runoff. I, I like, like run that. Off, right? I like that. Ran off into the locker room, <laughs> went to get warm with a victory in his pocket. Colton Schmidt, fourth-year man from UC Davis, on to punt it away. Jakeem Grant back deep for Miami. <laughs> It'll be a 48-yard punt. Five there on the return, and it'll be Dolphin football. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. 
They'll be led out by the all-time leading passer in Vanderbilt history. The veteran quarterback, it's Jay Cutler. And while it probably hasn't been a whole lot of fun for Jay Cutler throughout his career because he's had a lot of different coaches and offensive coordinators, it also has made him extremely adaptable. There's not anything he hasn't seen or done on offense in the NFL. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. A look now at the Miami offense. What I've always liked about Julius Thomas that kind of got lost a little bit the last couple of seasons is his basketball background. Remember, he played that in college before becoming a tight end in the NFL, and he's got to get back to that, playing above the rim, boxing people out so they can't get to him on pass routes. If he gets back to being that power forward he used to be, I think the returns would be really, really nice for the Miami Dolphins. Now Cutler to throw on second down. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Now, coaches always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, but when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? fake here on first down and unable to connect on the long pass it falls down incomplete he was trying to get that one to Kenny Stills that'll bring up second down quickly now a look at the Buffalo defense and Lorenzo Alexander's the ultimate chameleon in the NFL has reshaped his body to play different positions fullback defensive tackle defensive end outside linebacker special teamer he's done it all and now he's reaping the benefits. Fully entrenched as an outside linebacker in the NFL. Here we go now. Green, 39. On second down, Williams. <laughs> and able to push his way forward here for a good little game. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position, now more than ever, is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. Here's Cutler. Got a man, it's complete. Williams. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They go play action here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. Second down, here's Cutler. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. He doesn't find a ton of space following the display of quick feet down just inside the 45. A gain of four on the play, and that's going to lead to a third and 12. 
I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. From the shotgun, Cutler. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. It's a gain of five. And that'll bring up fourth down. Now Cody Parkey out to try the field goal. This from 54 yards away. To it, but it's well off to the right and no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. So it's an empty trip downfield there as they get a missed field goal on fourth down. And I didn't see anything in the setup. It's a good snap, good hold. Yep. He just pushed it, and that one never wanted to come back. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That, too. <laughs> so after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard oh, line. On first and 10, it's Taylor. Pressure, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back right around the 44. And their inaugural sack of the game coming from an unlikely source. You mean it wasn't a linebacker? It wasn't a defensive end? It was somebody like you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a surprise for the offense. That's not what they normally get when they think about pressure. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. On second down, Taylor. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Andre Holmes that time. And that takes us from second to third down. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Come on, let's go! A fake to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Colton Schmidt now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, a closer. Yeah, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They begin the drive with Williams. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room 
If you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Again, it's Williams. Oh, he faked it with a juke. Now he's got some room. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. A Miami first down on the 14-yard pickup. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. So the offense has it first and ten. counter here's Williams oh he's got some breathing room and he's gonna get this one across the 30 yard line back to back nice plays 12 yards that time and a first down getting the sense Charles are gonna put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game and why not what we're seeing so far it's working pretty well from them and here's the best part we always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on I think he likes natural light best the first carry for Kenyon Drake and he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. A one yard gain could look like a disaster but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one yard gains running the ball? If that's the case you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more but if it's just the occasional one yard run hey congratulations to the defense they won that one come back and get them the next time. Now they'll look to throw it with Cutler. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. And here comes play number six on this drive. Here we go now. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Now a handoff. Here's Williams. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much, as he's down to the 48. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. To throw, Cutler. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. It'll be a gain of four, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. Back deep for the Bills, Brandon Tate.
Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. Back onto the field now comes the Bills offense. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They'll start on the ground with McCoy. And an alley to run. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. You know, I have to be really happy after that play. The offensive line, to be able to create space in that situation when everything's jammed in and everyone knows you're going to run it, that's a big time. Yeah, because you're probably just thinking, hey, let's get to the four or five and get some breathing room, right? That's all you're asking for. That's all your punter's asking for. Instead, he's not necessary now. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Taylor to throw and he's taken to the ground but he was pulled down by the face mask here come the flags and I believe this is going to be a first down Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. well we looked at each other right away we knew that flag was coming out and I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you I don't want to throw the flag but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. McCoy and some space here and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory 10 yards good enough for a Buffalo first down it looks way too easy right now two carries two straight first down runs the eyes are carrying the legs to the proper hole but they're being created by an offensive line that has the leverage game going for him right now lower than the defensive front creating space and he's finding it in a big way Got to love what they're doing on offense right now. And they're not going to get a playoff here as time will expire on this first quarter. Nothing, nothing, our score. And we're back to upstate New York after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. And they've got it here with a first down. going to be met at about the 43. A gain of three, second down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Second down, it's McCoy. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Defense doing their job, really nowhere to run the football. Yeah, it's almost textbook, wasn't it? Every place he tried to find an open spot, 
There just wasn't one. Congrats to the defense. No game. Call fitting your gaps, right? I love it. You're exactly right. Let's go. One, nine, On third down, Taylor. It's complete to his tight end, Charles Clay. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this will remain a scoreless game. So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon, so apparently neither guy is immune. And out come the Dolphins now. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one maybe not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. They start to drive on the ground. It's Williams. And he'll get this across midfield to the 48. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Now a 10th carry, here's Williams. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Play action, Cutler. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. Jerry Hughes able to drop him for a loss of four. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Second down, Cutler. To the right side here, the tight end, Thomas. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Third down, Cutler. And he checks this one down to Williams. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It's a gain of six on the play, and it'll be fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. This will be from 56 yards out. They're not going to get it. 
They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out. Well, that was a long attempt to begin with, so the fake you might have known was somewhat of a possibility. Credit to the defense, though. They weren't fooled. You're right. They weren't fooled, and they were in a position of having to play it both ways. Guard for the fake, but you still want to rush the kicker yeah, because it was a makeable kick. So they ended up getting the best out of the whole thing. Stuffed the fake, and they take over the ball. And the Bills getting set to go. And the last time that they were on the field, a little demoralizing. Missed field goal. You know, always feel like you want to get it in the end zone, but then, oh, well, at least we're going to get three. Didn't go through the goalpost, so. It does test the mental processes of a team, though, doesn't it? Because when you miss a field goal, it's amazing how fast they want to turn on the guy kicking the ball. But you need to keep his confidence up because how many times have we seen games where it comes down to a stretch? And guess what? You need that guy to make the big kick for your team to move on or to win a game. Make sure you keep him happy. Make sure you keep him comfortable. I'm sure you always treated the kicker nicely, though, right? You know, truthfully, I did. Good. I always did because those guys, they won us a whole lot of games. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Here we go! On second down, here's Taylor. <laughs> and he's brought down. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. First down carry here for McCoy. Room here to run. And he's brought down. 19 on the last play, 19 more here, and another first down. I absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talked about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Taylor on first down. <laughs> and he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. It'll be a gain of six, and it'll bring up a second down. Taylor. And he'll check this one down to McCoy. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Seven yards on the pick up there, and now they've got it first and goal. And he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Scrimmage back at the six. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. 
They tried to run the counter, just that the defense wasn't fooled. And when they're not fooled, you see the end result because what you're doing there, you mentioned the counter. You're using your offensive linemen sometimes to pull or move to influence the defensive front to go in that direction and create the space back in the other side and block it appropriately. But you're exactly right. Didn't move him, sat there waiting for him and made the play. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll make it third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. And this offense on third down today, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. They're looking at a third and goal here. Here's Taylor to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Lawrence Timmons in there to drop him for a loss of 10. And it'll be fourth and long. Probably a little bit of a surprise call there on third and inches that they decided to throw the football. And how difficult is that for an offensive line when they look up and see all those extra bodies coming at them? Tons of bodies coming in. They get a huge sack there. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. And Hauschka's kick is good. And the Bills will take a 3-0 lead. And we were scoreless up until this point in the second quarter. Now we finally have a little action. Let's see where this action takes us. First quarter, no points at all. Now we've got our first score of the game. Well, does that signal that we're going to get more as we go along? Or will it revert back to what we saw in the beginning of the game? To the main field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's doing his thing. He's got some good yardage, but his team right now in the second quarter, zero points. Just not a complete formula. Half of it's there, being able to run the ball and set the tone. What if they may have to go to some play action, throw off the run game, and try and get the ball in the end zone? I was just going to ask you that same thing. Maybe you use that run now to set up the pass, right? I would think so because the run has been very effective for them. They'll throw on first down with Cutler. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Well, they brought the pressure, and that meant man coverage behind him, so he's still able to complete the pass. Even as he took the hit. And that's what you have to do, because I was just talking with a coach the other day, and he said, look, it's not always going to be pretty back there. You're going to have to give me completions. Even when you're taking some hits, sometimes it'll be your own blitz control, for lack of a better term. Got to make completion, step up and make those throws, and he did that. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. The Dolphins on third down, two for five to this point. Here it's third and three. From the gun, it's Cutler. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. They'll stop troops. They're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on to kick it away.
Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Tough spot here for the offense to start. Let's go! Right at They'll start the drive with a carry by McCoy. Gets it up past the 10 with a nice move. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Buffalo after this. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, we'll send you to Orlando and Larry Ridley as he'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. But no touchdowns. These guys need to give Larry some touchdowns to talk about. Things are too easy for him right now back in the studio. Come on, guys. Help the man out. Give him something to talk about. Second down following the run. the gun it's Taylor and some room to work able to slither by oh and now he bowls him over and he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30 give him 18 on that one as the Bills are going to have a first down So here we go, first and ten now. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. shotgun it's Taylor and an alley to run and he'll get up to the 43 yard line nine yards on the pick up there and it keeps the drive alive Taylor on first down. It's complete right side to Benjamin. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. 
And now we're set to get going. Just two yards to go here on second down for the offense. From the gun, it's Taylor. And a loose football. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughs it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not even going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with the run so far. Now whistles and a flag, and I believe a Dolphin got going a little early. So that one will be accepted. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Out of the gun, it's Cutler. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Green, 39. Green, 39. Now Cutler. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So he can't hang on, and as I watched that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. On third down, here's Williams. Now the Bills will take another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And here come the Bills. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there 
that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. First down with Taylor. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Cameron Wake able to drop him for a loss of a couple. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. doing here is this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage but that's it now the Dolphins are going to take another time out here so that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime The Bills on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third down and 12. Again, it's McCoy. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Colton Schmidt now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Good coverage there. An even 50-yard punt leads to a return of five. And there will be time for maybe one final play before halftime. as it falls incomplete. So we've reached halftime here at Orchard Park with the Bills taking the lead into the break. 
As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Both the Bills and the Dolphins are having some trouble moving the ball through the air. The yardage totals are low, and that's helped play into what was a low-scoring first half. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Late in the first quarter, McCoy is going to take it up the middle, and he won't be brought down until he makes it to their own 32-yard line. Now first and 10, Hughes has got the sack here. This goes for a loss of four. Timmons will get the sack here. This will go as a loss of 10. That'll do it for us here at EA Sports Studios. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles for the call of the second half. Brandon. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. On first and ten, it's Cutler. Got a man open. That's Devontae Parker complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. down carry it's Williams and they get him down right near the midfield stripe it's a six yard gain on the ground and that'll make it second and four let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield success on first down huge differences we know between second and four and second and eight and nine They run it again with Williams. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker.
So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Out of the pistol, here's Williams. And down inside the 40 to about the 38. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Offense staying ahead of the chains here, second and three. play Drake and he'll lose yardage here back at the 41 they'll wind up losing three and now it's third down Brandon that play typifies what we've seen from the offense all day long they've had no success getting things going I think for the offensive coordinator he's got to go to that side of the play sheet that says try something different try some specials something they haven't seen all day to try and get this offense kick started The Dolphins on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This will be third and six. All right, here we go. Boom, landed. Boom. From the shotgun, Cutler. And he finds Stills complete. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Let's go. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a third and one. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. The Dolphins on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Here's Cutler to throw. And he finds a man. It's Fasano. They give him seven yards on the play, and they do pick up the conversion on third down. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. So they're operating in the red zone. Let's go. Green 39. Green 39. From the red zone now, here's Cutler on first down. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. Just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Now Cutler to throw on second down. It's complete to Parker, left side. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down.
They're two for two on third down conversions on this drive. This one tough. They need nine yards on third down. To throw, Cutler. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. They do get 9, but it leads to 4th down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Parkey's kick is good. And the Dolphins are going to tie the score at three. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time. And he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. you got to have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level. And he's able to get back on track. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. So here's the Bills offense. Now they get ready for their first possession of the second half. I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and try and think with them here. Try to play field position maybe, turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense, who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> Taylor going to hand this one off to McCoy. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 15 yards that time, and a Buffalo first. And that's how you run the football and run it successfully. Big-time chunk of yardage picked up, but why? Offensive lineman won at the point of attack. Their leverage way better than the defenders. The low man wins when you're getting underneath and trying to move people. And that's exactly what happened on that play. The offensive line moved the defensive front, created space, and the end result, a fantastic run. And they'll keep on the ground with McCoy. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. That's another nice run, and I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. The other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy's going to keep getting the football, and that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. They snap it at one. Now it's Taylor. Benjamin with it over the middle. And he's brought down. Ten more there and another first down. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. It's lining up first and ten. Now a handoff here to his running back. Busting through contact. Just wasn't a huge hole there for him to operate. Stop just inside the 35-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, 
I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Come on, let's go. Come on. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. I know flashy plays, splashy plays, as people like to call them. That attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back -back five yard gains. Didn't force the ball downfield. Picked it up on the ground. Yeah, offensive line, they're getting it done. Fresh set of downs here. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Let's go! Right. This give is to McCoy. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. And here comes play number six on this drive. They'll go again to McCoy. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down at four now. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? From the gun on third down, it's Taylor. And that is incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? kick is good and the Bills have taken the lead so they don't get a touchdown here in this opening drive in the third quarter but I think you still say mission accomplished as they come away from it with the lead absolutely you've got to apply the pressure here make the other guys play catch up for a while and now you just hope your defense can step up and protect the lead To the main field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17 yard line. The Dolphins' offense now heads back on the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. All right, here we go. Three, nine, ten. They give it to Williams, running right. And he'll lose yardage here, back to the 15. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Well, add that play to his resume reel because he went to the Pro Bowl last year. That's how you go to the Pro Bowl. You make plays like that, big-time penetration, and throw people for losses. And the offense will be looking to get at least some of this yardage back here. It's second and 12. Now it's Cutler. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Ramon Humber, the outside linebacker, drops him for a loss of six. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again.
The Dolphins on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and 17. Now it's Cutler. And he checks this one down to Williams. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. Call it a gain of five. And that's going to make it fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Buffalo. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. The Bills offense coming out, ready to take over. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. A give to McCoy. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. They go now to McCoy. He's seen a ton of action this afternoon. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to bring up a third down. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. The Bills on third down. They're struggling. 0 for 6 thus far. This is third and 8. Taylor from the gun, he'll throw. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. Schmidt on to punt as he sends it away. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Now Cutler on first down. To the right side here, the tight end Thomas. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. 
When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Second down now after the pass completion. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Following the penalty, it's Williams. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It'll be a loss of a yard. And just like that, it's third down. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in old days were often outside linebackers. They just pushed them forward because they wanted to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running backs quicker than ever before. Extra DB on the field for the Bills here on third down. Yeah, maybe think and pass. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now a play fake here on first down. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. teams in long yardage situations with your defense, you're really going to go to your speed packages. You're going to get smaller, lighter guys on the field in order to cover the expected pass. So they might want to run the ball against a smaller, lighter lineup with your big guys, and that's exactly what happened on that play. It was tough on them, and now instead of being in third and very long, they ended up setting themselves up in third and manageable. They've got a chance at a first down. Now it's Taylor, and this is going to be incomplete. 
We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. Here's Colton Schmidt now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This is brought in at the 21. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. So now here come the Dolphins. down with Cutler over the middle and into the hands of his receiver Landry seven yards the pick up on the pitch and catch I know many people like to throw to the tight end maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size the slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness their speed and their route running savvy completed pass play now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground Second down, Williams. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Throwing now, Cutler on first down. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Damian Williams, the man he was looking for. And now it's second down. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. Now Cutler looking to throw. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll bring up a third down. So completion on second down. That brings up third. They go play action now. Cutler. And that is incomplete. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. The Bills' offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Let's go. One, two, three. This is McCoy. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. 
So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game, you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. Here's McCoy. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. McCoy, and he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. They'll run it with McCoy. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going. But you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll be knocked down sideways near the 42. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They go play action here on first down. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. It's a gain of nine yards. And it'll be second and about a yard. Well, clear running situation. Trying to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play. Set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever. Because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play. And they hit them over the top. And here comes play number six on this drive. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed is that's going to move the chains. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what we said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Come on, let's go! Throwing now, Taylor on first down. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength. And he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. They'll run it now out of the gun. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation.
So it's Bills football here as we get you reset. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. Travaris Cadet, his first carry. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Colton Schmidt now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And this one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And tough starting field position here. They'll look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The tight end, Julius Thomas, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Second down here after the incomplete pass. That is incomplete. Looking to go back to Thomas again, and it'll bring up third down. He's back to throw. That will be incomplete as well. I don't know. He had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. Or the mental focus. Yeah, level. that's but true. got to stay with it. That's true. The three straight incompletions, they don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on four. Back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield, and that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And now, boy, the ball's going to go over on downs here inside the 10-yard line. Boy, going for it at this stage in the second half, back in the shadow of your own goal post. Explanation, please, Mr. Davis. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to give you a great one, but here's a thought that I had. I wonder if maybe instead of going for it with your offense and announcing your intentions, that maybe you run out your special teams and fake it. Because even though teams say, hey, we plan for the fake all the time, I know from experience, you look at the situation and there's no way they're going to fake it here. And they probably had a better chance if they tried it that way. Here we go. Now McCoy. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Now the Dolphins are going to take another timeout here. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back.
throw it. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Third and long, Taylor and company hoping to regroup after the sack. Here's McCoy. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Another stop on third down, and this defense still hasn't allowed a touchdown to this point. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up. Accelerating, and off he goes. He's at the 50, 30, the 20, 10. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow. Wow! So a late score here to give them the lead, and this one is going down to the wire. And it has the whole place buzzing, doesn't it? And you can feel it start to ratchet up. Anytime there's a score late in the game, especially one that puts a team in the lead, creates an exciting finish. Cody Parkey is on now for the point after. And he's got it as the lead is now To the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. A little juke. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. One possession game, <laughs> time very much a factor. How does the offense handle this situation? Well, in a lot of cases, they should be somewhat relaxed. And I know that's counterintuitive because this is a pressure situation. But this is Friday practice every week of the season. You go over this situation, having to go downfield, limited timeouts, got to get out of bounds and keep the drive going and set yourself up. Defensively, you can't just lay back and let them do whatever they want. So it is a cat and mouse deal here. How much pressure will the defense bring and how much pressure can the offense handle? We're going to find out. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the clock stops with 23 seconds to go in the game. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action.
three yards remaining here on second down. Now Taylor with a draw to McCoy. Pretty move by Shady. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the clock will stop with 18 seconds remaining. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Come on, let's go! Point, nine. Point, nine. Back to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to do, you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle it yourselves. <laughs> I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like he said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Here's Taylor. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. And now here comes their final timeout as they take it with eight ticks remaining. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. Third and long, Taylor and company hoping to regroup after the sack. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment, the defense. Partner, we saw these Dolphins jump off sides a bunch last year, but that's not unusual for those guys like Sue who want to get that quick start into the offensive backfield, and they do make a lot of plays doing that. The Bills on third down. They've been stymied left and right. Converted only one time. This will be third and six. Taylor to throw. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. One final shot now. I'm not even sure he can get it to the end zone, though, from this distance. That's going to take as much arm as he has, and you actually have to plan for the contingency. Maybe you're playing a tip. Try and get someone down who can tip it up and keep it for your own team and try and get to the end zone that way. Come on, let's go! One, last. One last shot for Taylor. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium. That certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? I you loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com.
With that, we say so long from Buffalo.